Good afternoon, and thank you very much for coming to Toronto Police Headquarters. I'd like to introduce you Chief Mark Saunders, who will be addressing the media. Chief. Thank you. So today at noon, I had the opportunity of um, meeting with uh, several representatives from the taxi industry. And um, let me first start off by saying uh, it was a very constructive uh, meeting where we had an opportunity to discuss all sides of the table as it correlates with the present issues that are before us. Um, one of the things that, uh, that had uh, come to light for me um, after my uh, presentation the other day was the fact that um, presently Toronto Police Service has eight cases right now before the courts where UberX drivers have been charged under the Highway Traffic Act Section 39.1. And so the, the stance and, 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 and where this is the, the go forward from an enforcement capacity, um, from an enforcement capacity, um, what we are doing is we are going to wait until the courts make the decision on um, the outcome of those cases, those eight cases where we have charged uh, UberX drivers, and, and that will determine um, what avenue and what course and what direction we will take from an enforcement capacity as it uh, relates with the uh, UberX uh, situation in the City of Toronto. Um, I know before I had said that all of the cases were thrown out and, um, and that this was a uh, an issue before the lawmakers, but uh, the reality is um, this will now be an issue for the courts that will determine um, what Toronto Police Service will be doing, and if the outcomes are successful from a uh, uh, judicial perspective, then we will take an active role in the enforcement uh, against uh, UberX if that so presents itself. I'm willing to take some questions. Did you take an active role if these eight cases actually manage to be successful, but what happens if they don't? Well, then it's going to have to be we're, we're, we're back where we started, where the, the problem is the interpretation of the law. Uh, we have complex, uh, um, you know, law is incredibly complex. And until the laws are uh, clear and defined to allow uh, my officers to enforce the laws, uh, there lies the gap. Do you, do you, do you, do you get any assurances from the uh, taxi industry that there won't be another protest? Uh, while, while, this, while you're waiting for the cases? Well, I, I can tell you that the, the conversations and discussions that we had uh, were, were very constructive. We were looking for solutions. Um, I can tell you my stance has shifted um, after meeting them in the sense that um, I'm, I'm anxious to see what the outcomes are, the fact that we do have charges that were laid before uh, the courts, whereas before I, I wasn't aware of that. And so that, I think, um, um, there is some optimism that will give an opportunity, I think, for a faster resolution with the direction or what the direction will be versus waiting for uh, lawmakers to, to come up with what uh, their interpretations are. Well, you know, it's uh, it, it, I'm, I'm, it's unfortunate that you're taking a negative light on this. These charges were laid in March, um, and and so uh, the provincial offenses. And so uh, they have a faster turnaround than, than criminal offenses. Um, I am handcuffed until I get the, I don't control the judicial system. We, we're the enforcement piece. And, and, and we play a role in this. And, and we have to respond according to the law. And so until those laws are properly interpreted, um, there's not much more that we can do. So that's, that's where we're at. I'm not trying to take a negative point on this, Chief, but I know that we have in this city desperate cab drivers, and I think that they ended the protest on Wednesday night because they were promised a meeting with you, and I think their expectations were really high on the street that you were going to be able to do something right away for them. Well, you know what? That, that's your interpretation. I've been very, very clear what my role is, what the Toronto Police Service's role is in this whole thing. Our role is the enforcement piece the enforcement piece. We cannot enforce until we have the proper laws. And, um, and so if the laws aren't going to be created, there's not a whole lot that I can do. But what I like is the fact that we have cases before the court. And I think that when you deal with the timelines, I think that there's an opportunity for a much faster timeline with that court proceeding versus laws being made to, to, to satisfy what, uh, what needs to be done. So Chief, what exactly is 391 and when would you expect to get the results? Uh, 391 under the Highway Traffic Act 
fact is that a driver cannot uh, pick up a passenger for compensation unless they have uh, a license or are given the authority to do so. And um, so uh, under UberX, our officers laid charges uh, because the officers felt that they were not in uh, contravention of that, um, or that they were in contravention of that uh, Highway Traffic Act. And when do you, when you're saying it wouldn't be too long, like, would you think a month or two months or how long? That, that is something that the prosecutor's office can, can better determine. And um, I, I, I do not have control of when that is going to take place. Eight charges, I guess some people might say, well, if you can charge eight times, why couldn't you charge 10 times or 12 times? Why do you have to stop to wait to see what happens to these ones? Because we have to exercise our due diligence. We have to make sure that we're moving in the right direction. Uh, there is not a full and comprehensive interpretation um, of the law. And until we get that, um, there's no point in continuously doing the wrong thing. And, and, and so until we get it right, um, whether it be by written law that gets it right or whether it be by court decisions that, that say, this is what the outcome is, therefore you can continue to do this or you need to move in another direction. So what do you say that you're not going to lay any charges at all up at, like for Uber drivers until you get the results from these eight cases? Uh, if, if there's anything that presents itself that causes us to do something, we will. But I'm, I'm saying very, very, uh, I'm being very, very clear that the enforcement piece, when you look at the law as it is written right now, is very complex. It, it needs some clarification. And, and the courts will have an opportunity to clarify. Uh, when, you the, this, when you pull this back into the realities of policing in Toronto right now with the KPMG report and recommendations to possibly start looking at uh, privatizing or finding different ways to, to, uh, to deal with parking enforcement, Maybe less of those kind of officers out there on the street doing that, court services. So that, that would likely suggest you're going to have less officers available on the street to enforce this kind of thing. It's not like you're going to be able to magically produce a, a, a unit that's just out there doing nothing but looking for, for Uber enforce for Uber infractions. Correct. Well, it, I mean, it, it's it's no secret that I, I have hundreds of less officers than I had three years ago, and, and so we have a responsibility for public safety. So any time that there's an issue that that has a public safety component to it, um, I, I'm not going to walk away from it. Um, and, and, and so um, we have to deal with things as they come, and, and so depending on, on, on what needs to be done, we'll, 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 we'll deal with it between these eight cases that seem to have progressed a bit through the courts versus all the others <coughs> that were thrown out? Well, these, these eight cases were specific to that Highway Traffic Act offense, which is uh, 39.1. Um, I, I was informed that other jurisdictions uh, have done, uh, have enforced uh, UberX under the Highway Traffic Act, and uh, I was given certain jurisdictions, and I've done quick research, and uh, right now, no other jurisdiction has done that. So that's why um, we're waiting for the outcomes. And we'll also research to see if any other jurisdictions have, in fact, um, um, executed the Highway Traffic Act with UberX to see what the outcomes are of, of those uh, particular issues. The previous ones that were thrown out were not Toronto charges? Pardon me? The, the previous ones that were thrown out. The ones were thrown out were Toronto charges, but they were not the HTA 39 uh, 1. Where does the responsibility fall on the enforcement front? Is it Toronto Police or is it municipal licensing centers? Is it a sheriff's responsibility to crack down? No. The, the licensing uh, section is looking after the bylaw portion. Um, only peace officers can, can uh, enforce the Highway Traffic Act. Chief, uh, Do you think, though, that this is a responsibility that police should be focusing on moving forward? Or would you like to see the city actually? Well, uh, if if, uh, if if we need to be involved, then then, then we'll be involved. If uh, if there is enough information or evidence to show that there's a public safety uh, factor to this, then then we'll invest we'll investigate. But the the problem right now is the the interpretation of law. Once we get that interpretation of law, that will be the guiding principle that will allow us to to do what we need to do from a highway traffic act perspective. Can you, talk, can you talk about the protest the other day and whether or not you think there's another one coming? Uh, no, I, I, I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to speculate on whether or not there is or there is not going to be. You handle it. Chief, Chief Blair, during the Tamil crisis, took sort of a hands-off and wait, not running in and trying to get people off the road. You took a similar approach the other day. Is that what we would expect if there is another protest? The City of Toronto handles thousands of protests um, on, on a regular basis, and it will be, if it is, then we'll, we'll handle it the, the, the best way that we possibly can. When it comes to the potential of more protests, what have you told the representatives that you met today? So could, could you uh, 
that, that wasn't uh, the discussion. We weren't talking about protests. We're looking at solutions. We're looking for solutions, and, and we're looking for what we can do uh, under the circumstances. And, and, and it was an opportunity to talk about the different interpretations of the law and why um, it, it is so uh, complicated to, to articulate. The protest didn't come out at all? No, it did not. Do you think City Council's done a good enough job at expediting all of this? I'm not going to make comments on what City Hall is doing. So it sounds like you, you offered them kind of, I would think, a ray of light. I think I thought, and a lot of people thought, there was no way you could charge somebody under uh, the Highway Traffic Act for operating an Uber vehicle. But you've, it sound, you've opened the door to that, so I'm assuming they welcome that information. Well, I'll, I'll have them explain uh, what, what their feelings are with this. Listen, I understand that, that the industry is, is very frustrated right now, and, and there is a sense of urgency which is being addressed. Um, we're, we're guided by law, and, and, and people need to have an understanding of that. And, and where it becomes very complex is when people start oversimplifying things. And I can tell you, there are a couple of councillors that have oversimplified things, and, and that's a rhetoric that's not needed. Um, we have to be systematic about this. We have to deal with the law in, in the proper way, and that is we have to put these things before the courts, listen and appreciate and respect what the courts say are the proper conclusions, and then move in the direction from that point forward. Do you have a sense of timeline of when those eight cases will be resolved? And I, would, I would be guessing. Is it the jurors, though? Could it go on? I'm not, I've answered my question. I'd be guessing. It's really difficult to crack down on Uber in the first place. I mean, there are 20,000 Uber X drivers in the GTA. Oh, 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 oh. Wouldn't that be like playing whack a man? Well, I explained what the complexities were uh, a couple of days ago. Um, um, Today, what I'm interested in is, is what the move forward is. Um, and, and, and the move forward that I'm asking is, um, if, if you have an understanding of what the laws are, um, then I appreciate uh, hearing the feedback. But if you don't have an understanding uh, and you oversimplify, all you're doing is aggravating and making the situation worse. And I'm seeing a lot of that. So it, it's a matter of sitting down and, and reading the laws that, that, that are uh, making this very complex at this moment, which is why it's not just a Toronto issue. People are having problems with it in Waterloo, in Ottawa, in Niagara. There are issues. There are concerns. It's not like from an enforcement piece we're sitting back and saying we don't want to be involved. It's complicated. That's why we're... Is Uber exacerbating the problem by not stepping up and, and, and changing anything? I mean, technically, I guess they, they are operating outside of the guidelines. I'm, I'm talking about the enforcement piece. That's what I'm interested in. And right now, from an enforcement capacity, we've got some gaps that need to be filled. You did mention, you said that your stance had shifted. What, can you explain what you meant by that when you said after your meeting, or with your, uh, during your meeting with them, your, your, yeah, your stance Yeah, when I, I said a couple of days ago that we don't have the tools, we're handcuffed, and, and we're not doing anything until the lawmakers uh, make those changes. And I, I advise a taxi industry to sit across the table from the lawmakers. And, and, and now I've got eight charges. I've got eight officers that have charged eight UberX drivers right now. And I believe that that process will be faster than the lawmaker process. And I want to see what the outcome is from that. And, and if the outcome uh, does uh, make the determination that uh, from a Highway Traffic Act perspective, Toronto Police can enforce, then we will enforce. What's the perfect solution for you to be able to enforce? Like, what do you need from from I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go there. I, I appreciate the, the, the laws of the land. They're gonna make those determinations. And um, for me, as a, an enforcer of the law, um, I'm not going to go through what needs to be done. I have to respond to what they're gonna say needs to be done. I'll take two more questions. Okay. Okay. Them all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.